my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be doing a slightly different video than my usual Model Horsey related videos. It is still Model Horse related but it's not like exactly sh gonna involve Model Horses themselves. I'm not gonna be showing Model Horses um, but to do with Model Horses. I decided I'd show you guys my supplies and what I use for tack making. I've really been getting into tack making recently. Um, I've always done it a little bit, but i am kind of been getting into it a bit more recently. So I thought it'd be a fun video to do. I didn't really have any other ideas as well. Um, I've got quite a few ideas for once my Briarfest ponies arrive, but I didn't really have any good ideas for now. Uh, so I came up with this idea and it seems quite quick and easy to film so I thought I'd do this. I'll hopefully do like a halter tutorial or something like that in the future soon as well. But for now we're doing this video. So let's get started. So I've got my little drawer here with all my tack making supplies. There's a lot in there. Um, yeah I basically took my little drawer out of my shelf and brought it. So I'm going to start with like the tools because everyone slightly uses different materials um, these are, but these tools, most hack makers have these tools. First tool is needle nose pliers. I personally make my own hardware so all the buckles and everything uh, I make myself so these are really handy to bend all the wire and everything. Because I use wire a lot, um, wire cutters. Obviously. These tiny little, they're covered in glue at the moment. And I think they're actually tweezers. They're quite hard, like solid, um, hardcore tweezers um, and they've got tiny tiny little points and they're really good for bending like tiny little wire things. Then I've got these little tweezers which I haven't really used but I thought you know they might be handy. We had them around the house, lying around the house somewhere like they might be handy at some point. Tiny little kind of not super sturdy ones but it could be handy. So the next tool is called your pounce wheel. Uh, most tack makers have this. It's for making stitch marks. It's got these tiny tiny little points and it basically rotates so it makes little indents in leather so it makes little stitch marks moving on to more of my supplies now because that's mainly my tools obviously I have scissors as well um let's start with kind of weird supply it's a bit weird but you know cans I use these to make trees for English saddles so I have this bunch of cans here. Very simple, you just get a bunch of cans, canned drinks, drink them and then wash the cans and you have cans in it. Simple. Obviously wire for making buckles. Uh, I have two different sizes. I have a 0.3mm gouge and a 0 0.5 On the tiny tiny little wire and um, the 0 0.3 I haven't really used it's something I'd more use for Schleich scale models and um, it's really tiny and um, this is like the one I use for more traditional scale models the 0 0.5 millimeter gouge obviously every tack maker has to have glue some sort. This glue is actually really nice because it does sort of like set quite quickly 
so it doesn't it stops being sticky but it's kind of like it's not fully set for another 24 hours or so um so you can take it apart quite easily if you're not happy with something yeah just dropped it um it's really nice glue and i definitely recommend this glue anyone's like well, that's looking the only bad thing about it is it sometimes just spills out the bottle and it can be quite annoying I also have this glue, which I don't really use that much. I use it for um, when I'm doing like the edges. I forgot what it's called right now, but like the edges of blankets or something sticking on the ribbon around the edge or things that need quite precision because this glue is quite like it is a bit, it's not great for doing sticking on tiny little things I use it more for like this one doesn't hold so well if you need to like hold a buckle on this one's better for just sticking things onto fabric because it is fabric glue if I make rugs or something or blankets saddle blankets saddle pads this one's good yeah it doesn't dry quite as quick um but it does still dry quick enough Here is the little, um, like, hemming, I think it might be called hemming. Um, this little ribbon that I use to do the edges that you just fold over, like so. And you're good to go. I've got this bunch of, like, leather lace. It's, this one's really plasticky. And I don't really know if I'll ever even use it. This one's quite nice. It's quite thick, so it doesn't need thinning, thinning down. But it's quite nice. And another little piece of leather lace. This one's quite hard and stiff. So the glue doesn't really... When you bend, If you try to make a bridle with it, you bend it over, try to stick it together. It's quite hard and stiff, and the glue just lets go of it. And it doesn't really stick very well. A little random piece of wire just hanging out here. I'm gonna have to put that away. Um, while we're on the case of ribbons and laces and all that stuff, this is like what I use for halters and um, nylon bridles, rope halters, and stuff like that. So in here, I've got gloss grain ribbon. I currently only have three colours. Just pick my favourite ones out of the whole. So they were selling. Um, and gross grain ribbon is basically like, it looks like nylon because it has this ribbing on it. So it really looks quite a lot like nylon. Got to focus the camera back on myself. Thank you, camera. Um, and then it looks like miniature nylon. So it, it's great for making mini nylon halters for my horses. And I also got like hot pink and a purple one in here. I've got these little silk ribbons. These actually don't work that great. They're tiny, they're only two millimeters wide and I bought them for making like halters because they're so small. But they're very, very thin. And um, they're not really sturdy, they don't really work so well. So I'll probably just end up using them for decoration on some sort of tack at some point. And then finally I've got Chinese knotting thread, I believe this is, it's called. It looks a lot, you could also just get tiny paracord probably, but it looks a lot like paracord and the rope you'd use for making rope halters. So it's great for making ropes, reins, um, lead ropes, rope halters, and it's just perfect for that purpose because it looks like it's got that, I'm not sure if I'll actually, be able to get my camera to pick up on it but it's got the little like it's not just kind of actually looks like miniature rope which is cool so next I've got a bunch of fabrics um I was actually looking for the square quilted fabrics um to make blankets and saddle pads I couldn't find them but I did find these um like ribbed kind of fabric, 
not sure if it'll focus. Um, that you use for like the sleeves on t-shirts and jumpers. Um, and I thought it looks... It, it gives some sort of texture and it looks pretty cool actually. Well like, yeah, let, let's just use that, you know. It, it'll work. So I've got four different colours at the moment. I've got a purple, white, navy, and black. Next I have some felt. I do actually have more felt than this. It's just like, this is what I have in my little drawer. Um, because it's kind of like the nicest. And I don't really use felt for much. It's more, if I make maybe like a bareback pad, you'll, I'll use it for the bottom, for the underneath. Or it's usually used for the underneath or to add thickness to things. And a bit of fluff, softness. Um, yeah, just a bunch of felt. Because felt is quite handy in tech making. Next I have some leather. So I'm actually vegan, so I don't use real leather. Um, I use faux leather. Um, I found it quite hard. I've had faux leather before that wasn't thin enough. It was quite a hardcore thick stuff. But I managed to find this stuff. It's a bit stretchy one way so I have to be careful when I cut it to make sure I cut it in a way that it's not stretchy. Um, in the like if I, so if I cut a tiny strip for a, a, a bridle or a leather halter or something I have to make sure that it's not going to stretch like this. Um, so I, the stretchy way is like this, so like when it's so tiny it's not going to stretch. Um, because it, this is for clothing actually, so why it's so thin. So I've got brown and I've got black here as well but it's actually folded the fabric side um, up. That's the leather part there because um, it's backed with lycra. And I also have these tiny, tiny little um, sewing pins. Now, I don't really use them for anything other than the little tip they have here. I'm not sure if my camera will focus on them, probably. Probably not. But they have this tiny little head, which is very nice for making, like, rivets. And uh, the little decorative pieces on saddles and stuff. Um, not quite sure what it's properly called in tack, but the little heads are quite nice for making decorative pieces. I think decorative pieces. <laughs> and I also have this little um, little box which I keep hardware that I've already made. Like here, I've got a few buckles which you won't be able to see probably that I've already made. And I also keep any like off cuts in here, um, any little scraps of ribbon uh, to use in future projects. I also have the little pins in here because um, they tend, to, they're not really, the box isn't really sealable properly. So I keep them in here just in case they fall out, they don't fall out everywhere. They just fall out in here. Finally, I'm not sure actually if this is the last one, I'm going to look at my other shelf. But I believe this is all I actually actively use. Um, I've got some fake flowers and I'm really um, conventional tech making stuff but it's I like to make flower crowns and I like my horses to wear flower crowns I think it's really adorable so few fake flowers to make those. Actually not a few, quite a few. <laughs> quite a lot of fake flowers I have here. It's quite a lot of them. <laughs> Gotta say. Not tons but there's a fair amount of fake flowers there. Uh, I use about five or six for one flower crown and out of these I can make at least ten or fourteen flower crowns. So yes and I just found a little blanket template at the bottom as well. I do also have some things like embroidery floss and some beads. <laughs> it fell. Some beads and 
these little decorative pom-pom ribbon thing um, but they're not in like my main type making drawer because it's not something I use on a daily basis I'll use it sometimes if I make like an Arabian costume or something decorative but it's not really something I use very often it's quite rare that I use these things so those are all the tack making supplies I use um, there might be a few others that I have missed but these are the main ones I use I hope you guys enjoyed this video it's something kind of different than usual I think um, this isn't meant as an instructional video of what you should buy when you get into tack making it's kind of the basics but this is just personally what I found I need for the tack I like making yes I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.